Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Callie Duke. My husband Bronson and I are the pastors of New Life Church in downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. And this morning, I'm excited to be diving into the topic of what does it mean to be born again? This is a pretty common phrase in our faith. You hear it all the time, I'm a born again believer. What does it mean? Um, maybe a little too common of a phrase, but this morning we're gonna dissect it and make sure we really know what it means. So if you've got your Bible out, we're gonna be reading from John 3. It's a text where a Pharisee named Nicodemus goes to Jesus in the middle of the night, um, Nick at night, if you will. And he goes to Jesus because he's seen all the miracles he's been doing among the people. And he can tell that this is a powerful man. This is a significant man. And he wants to find out what Jesus is all about. Um, and Jesus cuts straight to the chase with Nicodemus because he knows Nicodemus is there with him, because he can sense the significance of what is going on and the power that is there. But Jesus wants to tell him how he himself can actually become part of what's going on with Jesus. And so I'm gonna read it to you. It says, um, starting in verse one, it says, now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. And Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. And Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying you must be born again. Now, I myself am a new mother of twins, um, recently gave birth to two beautiful boys. They're four months old. Pray for me. Um, but no, as a mother, I can confirm that no one wants the baby to come back into the womb to be born a second time. So what does the phrase born again actually mean? Well, I believe the emphasis is on the word again, because to be born again, you have to die first, right? Baptism is a very significant thing, a very significant part of the Christian faith. And a lot of people see baptism as a washing, like you're washing your sins away. But baptism is not a washing. Baptism is actually a drowning. You are putting to death the sinner that you are so that you can lay hold of the righteousness of Jesus won for us on the cross. And so to be born again, we have to die first. Um, then be born as a new creation and be fully dependent on Jesus and his righteousness and what he can do for us, not ourselves and our own ability to keep God's commandments. And it's interesting to me that Jesus is talking about being born again to someone like Nicodemus, a Pharisee, who by all of the cultural standards of the day had his life together. He was doing the right things. He knew the scripture. He was living a good life. He was a good person. And Jesus says, no, if you're interested in this miraculous situation, this power that you're seeing, you're going to have to die to everything that you know that you draw your strength from and draw your strength from me. That's what it means to be born again. Um, so being born again is not adding morality or religious practices to your life as a supplement, like taking a vitamin. Uh, no, it's, it's killing everything that you used to have that you would draw your strength from and your peace from. And and putting that to death and being born a new creation in Christ and learning to live and breathe and become a new creation in Him. So being born again isn't a supplement to religious behavior. It actually challenges religious behavior. Um, I grew up in church like so many people across the Bible Belt, and um, I did all the things. I was part of small groups. I was um, When I was in high school, I was leading worship. I was just part of the church, but and I was a believer of Jesus, but I wouldn't say that I actually became born again until I realized my need for Him in college. Um, and this is probably a story for another time, but I was very dependent on myself and my own abilities to gain the approval of other people, uh, the acceptance of the people around me, very insecure, and I relied on myself um, through all the means that I had to feel good about myself. I was, um, you know, killing myself to get good grades. I had an eating disorder, all of that, all a story for another time. But there came a day when I realized that I was relying on myself to find peace and that I actually had no peace. And so it was at that time that I realized I needed to die to that person and depend on the sufficiency of Christ to bring me peace. And that's when I believe that I actually started to follow Jesus and became a born again believer. Um, and so 
you know, do you see that what the good news of Jesus is? It's no matter how good you are, no matter how pulled together you are, you still have to be born again. And then the opposite of that would be that no matter how messed up you are and no matter how broken you are, you can be born again. It's the good news of the cross. And so, um, you know, in John 3, it goes down. The most famous verse in the Bible is John 3, 16. A lot of people don't realize he's actually talking to Nicodemus. Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus when he says, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. So to be born again is simple. It simply means to repent of trying to gain access to God by our own goodness and to achieve godliness on our own um, and believe in the saving power of Jesus to do it for us and to live from that place each and every day. And it can be very difficult to do this for anyone, but especially if you're a good person who believes you have your life together because you can tend to rely on your own strength and your own goodness when in all reality, none of us are good. None of us um, can make it to the Father except through Jesus. So um, here are my two questions for you today. Um, number one, have you died yet? Has your life really been transformed by the saving power of Jesus? And what do I mean by that? Um, does your life look different after your encounter with Jesus or does it look exactly the same as it did before? Evaluate. Um, and if it doesn't, you can still today start dying to yourself, burying that old person and relying on the strength of Jesus. And then my question number two is, where do you need to die again? Where are you trying to supplement good religious behavior for a relationship with Jesus? You know, that's what Nicodemus was doing. He believed himself to be a good person. He just wanted in on the power, but he can't believe he is good and be in on the power of Jesus. You have to believe that nothing is in you is good. Nothing that is in you is good to in inherit and to encounter the power of Jesus. And, um, you know, fair, the Pharisees of the day did this. They traded their relationship with God for religious activity within the temple, for religious cl clout within the temple. And a challenge for all of us today is in all of our religious activity, are we staying connected to the heart of God? Let me pray for you. God, I just thank you so much for anyone and everyone that might be watching that your Holy Spirit might be beginning to highlight areas where uh, we still have to die and lay down our own goodness to inherit your righteousness. Lord, I pray that um, as we go into our day, Lord, we would not depend on our own goodness and our own, our own ability to make our way to you, Lord, but that we would just lay our lives down and receive the beautiful grace of Jesus, his righteousness and everything won to us on the cross and live from that place. We trust you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.